guys? Uh, welcome back. Uh, I'm here today with Jeremy from Agents Are Strong. Thanks for helping me out, brother. And we're just going over the defense technique against that low line um, uh, stabbing attack that's straight up center line. So like this, we're just basically stabbing in the center line, okay? So we talked about in our last video about the characteristics of a knife fight. Um, if you don't know, please go and check that video. Uh, if not, we're going to break down the, the tactics of how to approach this situation. So if I can't aware and avoid because I try to, but I end up backing myself into a corner or I'm in an elevator, I have no other choice but to defend myself because I can't escape. So the first thing is, if you noticed in the video, when he was separated from me, um, and I'm further away, my fighting stance was kind of like this. Then as he closed distance, I went from here to here. Why? Because if I have my hands out right here, he can literally take the knife and cut my hand if he wanted to. Stab or just kind of like just slash at it, like that. I'm giving him a target. But when I bring my hands close to myself and make a fist, and, cut, I'm, and I'm really tight like so, what I'm doing, I'm also protecting my flexor tendons. Flexor tendons is what control your grip. If I get cut here, I lose the ability to grip. Also, me bringing every, everything in tight forces him to come closer so I can effectively defend myself. So this is your fighting stance if you know that a knife is coming at you. Super tight like this. Just keeping your, your elbows in. Think T-Rex arms and just basically sniffing your, uh, sniffing your knuckles. Okay. So we want to be able to minimize injury to yourself. So the attack is coming. So if you're a, um, a female or um, carrying a, a purse, that's what I see on the street a lot. When you use this as an example, what I see a lot is people holding it in their dominant hand that creates an issue. Uh, I recommend carrying the purse in your non-dominant hand so you can use your dominant hand to push away and have strength to create distance. If you have a laptop in here, you can use that as a shield. Like, hey, stop, 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 he's coming in. I can use that to brace myself and maybe even push him away and then run. Maybe if I can drop the purse and give it to him, it gives me a less weight to run and it, it's just a laptop. You, you can, your life is more precious than that. So don't, don't worry about your belongings, okay? So now we're gonna go into uh, a little detail about the technique. It's called the, uh, the split X. And in traditional martial arts, it's usually taught like this. So when he comes in for that low line stab, they create this kind of like low line, um, like this, this little X sign, and they stop it like so in traditional martial arts. The problem was with this is you have to be precise and also um, you're using two hands like so, where it's to, to, the, to the ability where he can use his hand and push down onto my hands, pull his knife back and, and get cut. So that creates an issue. But we can take the basic foundation from this and teach the split X. Let me show you. So we're gonna start off teaching by this motion here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open our hands and one's gonna go high and one's gonna go low. My right hand, the outside of my forearm is making a contact between his uh, elbow and his shoulder right here and then the outside of my uh, left hand is going to go inside his right forearm in between the elbow and the wrist so it creates this kind of split X and it creates this, uh, this sort of a funnel and what you're doing is it's creating very powerful structure so as Jeremy's uh, coming trying to stab me it, he's not going to make contact and if you can go as hard as you can go a little bit harder 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 as hard as you can keep going as hard as you can Go. One more, a little harder, a little bit harder. Cool, thank you. You all right? So, as you can see, that works really, really well. And if you notice, Jeremy was grabbing me here. I like, so, in a real life situation, what people tend to do instinctually is I want you to walk up to me and, 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 and grab my shirt and then try to stab me, okay? They normally try to take care of this arm first. But you have to understand, this is not what's going to kill you, this is what's going to kill you. Who cares if he's grabbing me? If you notice when he's grabbing me, I paid no attention to that. This is what's gonna kill me, so I'm gonna focus my attention on this. I can still create stuff structure, and even if he grabs me in a really tight clinch, like so, I can't, so hold me down really tight. Like I can't move, I can't go left and right, it's pretty strong, and he comes in the stab, I can still, go ahead, just stab. I can still create that separation between myself and the knife, okay? So once again, that split X, keeping good solid structure. The next thing that we're gonna do, is go in, once, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my back of my right hand, I'm gonna go palm down and hook on the back of the elbow. The reason why I wanna do that is I wanna have two arms against, or two hands against one. So also, um, the knife attacks are in repetitive motion, so as he pulls back, I might not be able to hold on, so pull back really hard. 
I have missed the opportunity, but I can easily come back and create that split X structure when he comes in again. So if I get a good hold and he's able to, uh, and he, when he pulls back, it actually drives this momentum for me to knee. And what I'm kneeing is basically anything low line. I can go for the groin, but what I really want to do is basically get his leg to post back. So when he, if he's standing up straight like this, he has pretty good structure, but by post his leg back, it drops, it, you see him drop. So I have more control of him and he's structurally broken. So once again, coming for that split X, as he pulls back, I'm gonna uh, grab the back of his elbow. When he pulls, I'm gonna step forward my left leg, I'm gonna get him to the knee which breaks the structure, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my back muscles, like a rowing motion. I'm not using my biceps, I'm using my back rowing. Structurally, it's stronger than your biceps. So I'm rolling him in, bringing his elbow to the tip of my sternum, okay? From this point, I'm just basically gonna take my left hand and cover my right, uh, my, my left palm to cover up my right knuckle, it looks like this. And what this does is creates a very solid base where there's no room to wiggle. So if he tries to pull his arm out, I'm, I'm pretty solid, okay? At this point, I'm gonna use my right hand, I'm gonna pretend I'm shaking hands, and my left hand is waving bye-bye. So once again, shaking hand, waving bye-bye, like this. I'm gonna clip them together like that, and it's gonna be right on this tricep tendon, and I'm gonna bring my shoulders uh, parallel 90 degrees like so. So it's pretty tight, so try to, pull, try to pull, try to pull away, all right? And then I know what you're thinking, oh, I can just take his leg and take him down. I get it, but as I'm instructing this, this is just a moment in time, okay? So from this situation, once I have control of the arm, I, I know that he can't stab me. Notice that the knife is pointing down. When it's pointing down, you're doing it correctly. If the knife is pointing up or like this, he can easily pull away, so pull, go ahead and pull away. There's no structure in that, okay? So now I just point down, I'm here. At this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a foot change to take him down. What I'm doing is I'm taking my right leg, I'm just gonna step back, not too, like I'm walking, I'm stepping backwards, just like you're walking. And then I'm gonna basically take his head and drive it toward my right foot, which takes him down flat on the stomach, like so. So from here, boom. And then what I always talk about is you never ever wanna drop your knees onto the ground because you don't know there are needles or broken glass, you always want to land on your opponent. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my right knee and I'm putting on top of his head, taking my left knee and dropping it on his ribs. At this point, I'm going to give verbal cues to drop the knife. If he does not drop the knife, I need to break something on him that will cause him not to attack me. So what I'll do is I'm basically going to reach forward and do a Superman motion until his shoulder pops off out of alignment. So I'm dislocating that shoulder. At that point, how do I break safety? I'm just gonna go like this. I can push off, get up. If I want to make sure he doesn't come up after me, I just stomp on this ankle to break it and then run, okay? So putting that all together, I have my fighting stance. The split X comes out. I grab the back of the elbow. As he pulls back, I step forward knee, bringing the shoulder or his elbow to my sternum. I create that grip. I take him down and I land on top of him, giving him verbal cues to drop the knife. And um, at that point, if you don't feel safe to um, take your uh, to get up, you can just yell and help, um, ask for help nearby um, until uh, the cops get there. So that's basically it. Any questions? Cool.